हेलो यस ओके ओके सो आई एम डॉक्टर जबीरा एंड आई विल बी अमंग वन ऑफ दिनटोर फॉर एफ ओ पी एंड टैस प्रिपरेशन फॉर फेब कोर्स एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद न्यूरोलॉजी चैप्टर एज द न्यूरोलॉजी चैप्टर इज अ मेजर चैप्टर सो वी हैव डिवाइडेड इन टू टू and uh, it has two parts lecture 1 and lecture 2 and uh, most of the topics related to tas are covered in the uh, part 1 but uh, you know uh, they are uh, overlapping mostly because in uh, some of uh, the clinical cases uh, like in clinical disease they also ask about the pathophysiology so that can't be separated as a tas separate okay so that will be covered along with the disease we are going to do but that is included in part 2 okay so a uh, neurology part 1 is most about the tas and some of the epileptic diseases which are related to the fop all right so now let's uh, start with the neurology part 1 and as we will go uh, towards uh, the like different type of topics i will be mentioning you that what is important what is important for tas and what is important for fop okay and if you have any if you'll be having any questions so you can ask me all right okay <clears throat> let's get started with All right. So now, first slide is about the embryology. So remember, uh, like in um, FOP and TAS, they usually ask you about the um, embryology, but not so much in details. Okay. So only like uh, some of the points to remember, like that would be enough to uh, do in the FOP TAS. So that is why only those points uh, which are more important. So we have included in the chapters. All right. So coming uh, to the <clears throat> uh, just a second, the window has got open. Just a second. Okay. Yes. So embryology of the central nervous system. All right. So what happens that when uh, the embryo is forming? Okay. So from third week of gestation. Uh, the cells uh, makes and proliferates okay so there are three type of layers which is forming there are three types of layers which is the ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm okay so um, from each of the layers different type of organs different type of uh, linings are formed okay so here we will be talking about the ectoderm because central nervous system initiates to form from the ectoderm okay so from third week of gestation uh three layers are formed which is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and from ectoderm what happens that central nervous system is formed but how so notochord induces ectoderm so you can see over here this is the notochord okay um <clears throat> just a second please here yeah. so you can see that this is the notochord okay so notochord what happens that notochord induces the ecto ectoderm proliferation okay so this give rises to the primitive neural tissue so the primitive neural tissue is formed from the ectoderm now what happened that there will be maturation of the primitive neural tissue what what will form after the maturation of the prim primitive neural tissue they will form if you see the transverse section so they will forms the neural plate okay so whole of the neural plate they will form the neural groove okay they will form the neural folds which are these and if you see the longitudinal section okay so this hole is basically the neural tube okay this is the neural uh, neural folds okay in, be in between we have the neural um neural groove what is happening basically this is the neural plate and this uh, basically forms the neural groove in between and they tends to fold so obviously we we have to make the spinal cord right so for that reason this neural plate uh, gets uh, uh, folded all right so these are uh, the structures which forms from the primitive neural tissue then what happened that neural neural folds grows towards midline to form neural tube now this you can see that neural tube is formed you can see over here this neural fold with the neural groove forms the neural tube neural tube fusion begins in the cervical region at the same time neural crest cell forms so you can see over here when the neural tube is formed at the same time different type of cell is uh, produced which is the neural crest cells which is seen in the blue color okay and the complete fusion of uh, the neural tube occurs uh, at uh, the 25 to 27 days that means whole of the month um take place uh, for the you know uh, folding of the neural tube okay 
this uh, neural tube uh, folding progresses caudally and cephalically okay so cephalically will be upward okay and uh, caudally will be downward okay so when we talk about cephalic so this will be this will be falling um, forming the cephalic neurope which is the rostral and caudal neurope which is the downwards okay so this is the uh, this is all about the neural tube folding all right uh, i would like to mention over here that all the basics are for task exam so embryology is also for the task exam they are not going to ask you specifically for this the most important is basically associated diseases at each stage so we will be uh, discussing that after discussing some of the embryology all right okay next we have I, I mentioned you that there is cephalic end and caudal end. Okay, so when we talk about cephalic end, it will produce the primitive hindbrain, okay, and the midbrain and forebrain. Okay, so three types of a primitive brains if form uh, from the cephalic end. Now, when we talk about hindbrain, midbrain, and forebrain, so I want to show you the picture of that. That what is the primitive hindbrain and forebrain and midbrain. So you should know this basically for TAS exam. So this is basically forebrain, uh, which is known as the prosencephalon. This is midbrain, which is mesencephalon. This is hindbrain, which is known as the rhombencephalon. Now, from these, basically, what happens that uh, further division takes place. You do not need to remember all of these. Okay, but you should know that what cavities and walls are forming fr from these. Okay, so what walls and... <clears throat> what walls and uh, um, these are forming so you can see over here so cerebral hemisphere walls will be cere cerebral hemisphere which is forming from the forebrain okay and uh, cavities will be lateral ventricles then when we talk about the diencephalon so thalamus and hypothalamus and third ventricle then coming to midbrain now midbrain forms the mesencephalon and from this midbrain an aqueduct is formed only then coming to hindbrain so hindbrain forms the metencephalon myelencephalon now this these give rises like metencephalon give rises to the pons and cerebellum and cavities upper part of the fourth ventricle then when we talk about myelencephalon so give rises to the medulla and lower part of the fourth ventricle so this is how the cavities and uh, the walls are formed of the brain all right <clears throat> okay so next we have now coming back to the previous slide okay so let me delete all these markings okay so again coming to the caudal and cephalic we have done that cephalic and uh, give rises to the hindbrain midbrain and forebrain and then we have discussed discussed the cavities and uh, uh, the walls then we have caudal end caudal end is uh, the downward end which composes of the neuroepithelial cells okay so caudal end composes of the neuroepithelial cells which give rise to the neuroblast okay so this is the you know uh, the cells are, you know, changing its form. So composed of neuroepithelial cells, which give rises to the neuroblast. Now, this type of cells mature to form gray and white matter of the spinal cord. Okay, so caudal end mostly responsible to form the gray and white matter of the spinal cord. Now, next is the neural crest cells. The neural crest cells I showed you in the previous slide, uh, which is in blue color just above uh, uh, the neural tube. Okay, so what will happen from the neural crest cells? So neural crest cells give rise to the peripheral nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Okay, so this is important point basically because some of the questions have like if they are asking about Hirschsprung disease because in Hirschsprung disease there is problem with the um, aganglionic cells or you can say ag ag aganglion of uh, uh, the rectum. Okay, so they ask you that what type of cells are responsible. So you have to go back to the embryology of the central nervous system that what is responsible for the autonomic nervous system. Okay, so we will be discussing this again in Hirschsprung disease. Don't worry. I'm just mentioning you over here. So neural crest will be the answer because neural crest cells give rise to the autonomic nervous system and supply the GIT as well. All right, so this is neural crest cell. Then we have cell differentiation. So now what happens that neural crest cells basically differentiate into a different uh, type of cells which is neuron astrocytes and oligodendrocytes now i want to show you the structure of these cells uh, you do not need to remember the functions and all just to you know give an overview that how they look like okay so neuron everybody knows this that this is a, a neuron okay and uh, it has dendrites it has cell body nucleus it has exon exon and they have the myelin sheath okay and then we 
we have the exon terminal. Now, this exon terminal synapses to the dendritic uh, dendrites or for the other exon. And so what happened when the signal comes? So signal coming to this uh, neuron transfers throughout and then a synapses take place over here and then one more neuron. So, so you know, uh, one by one, each neuron will be having the signals. Okay, so this is about... <clears throat> the neuron then we have uh, the um, astrocytes so astrocyte basically supports the neuron with the blood vessels so this is the astrocyte basically it attaches the neuron to the blood vessels now what is the main function of the astrocyte is the giving the nutrients and blood supply to the neuron basically okay so this is how the astrocytes look then we have oligodendrocytes oligodendrocytes are present in between two neurons basically they support two of the neurons okay and you can see over here uh, with they are attached to the myelin myelin sheath of each exons of the neuron okay so this is how the oligodendrocytes looks like so you do not need to do these type of cells in detail that what are these and what are their functions and all so it is not asked in the exam just for overview i have uh, shown you the picture okay next we have uh, neuronal neuronal cell migration to their location okay so now what will happen when the cell differentiation differentiation occurs now this neuronal cells migration occurs so all the neuronal cells goes to the to their places and they form the radial glia okay so they along the radial glia to form layers and growing inside out so they form six layers basically which is mentioned over here so neuronal neuronal organization into six layers Okay, along the radiant glia and then they basically uh, grows uh, from inside to out. Okay, so that means uh, they are reproducing, not reproducing, like they are proliferating. Okay, then what happens that uh, after the neural organization, synaptogenesis occurs. Now, what is synaptogenesis? As I told you that from one neuron to another neuron, the exon terminal and the dendrites are get attached and the signals are passing towards it. Okay, so uh, this means that uh, there is synapses taking place in between. Uh, when it occurs, it occurs at the 20 week of gestation. All right, next we have the myelination so i have shown you the myelin sheet of the exon so that myelination occurs between 36 week of gestation okay and um and term and then progresses till infancy it doesn't stop at uh, till birth but afterwards also until infancy it continues uh, to myelinate all right so this is a, a bit of uh, the embryology of the central nervous system you do not need to remember all of them okay um some of the points need to be remembered like neural crest cells okay then you have to know the radial glia okay radial glial cells okay and then um, i will be discussing with you that what is important basically this is important which is the associated defects now we have done the process that how the embryology occurs uh, we know that what are the steps uh, we have gone through the uh, steps right but the important thing is this that what are the defects which is associated with these stages okay so you should know the gestational age and you should know that where is the defect and you should know the disorders okay so this is the most important which is taken from the sop all right so we did primary neuralation now primary neuralation which is which we mentioned uh, which we discussed that this is the folding of uh, the spinal tube okay neural tube and uh, it uh, completes uh, between three to four weeks all right, so three to four weeks and the CNS development is the primary neuralation. If there is defect in this, suppose if uh, there is defect uh, of uh, the primary neuralation, then what will happen? Uh, two things can happen, which is the spina bifida. Okay, so there can be a spina bifida, which is the defect of the spine or anencephaly. Now, anencephaly, it means that uh, some part of the brain is missing or some part of the brain is uh, not completely formed. And this is because of the malformation of the anterior neural tube. Okay, so this, these are the two disorders which you have to remember because of the neural tube formation, defect in the neural tube formation, and it occurs three to four weeks of gestation. Then at two, three months, what is forming? Prosencephalic development. So we did that. <clears throat> uh, pr uh, like formation of uh, the uh, hindbrain, midbrain, forebrain. Okay, so this is basically forebrain uh, and uh, prosencephalic development. <clears throat> So if there is defect of the prosencephalic development, so that means defect in the cerebellum, uh, sorry, uh, cerebral cortex, okay? Something is a uh, uh, problematic between this uh, cerebrum. So what are these? So 
one condition is the holoprosencephaly now what is the holoprosencephaly that when uh, we there is failure of right and left hemisphere separation so we know that the structure of the brain is somewhat like this okay so we have two parts of the brain and in the center it is separated so if there is failure of uh, uh, the right and left hemisphere then what will happen there will be a spherical brain and no separation will be there this is known as the holoprosencephaly then we have agenesis of uh, the corpus callosum so now what is what do you mean by agenesis of the corpus callosum now corpus callosum is a basically um uh, the tissue which is present between two hemispheres so let me show you the picture okay uh this is uh, here okay so this is corpus callosum basically okay uh, it is present in between the hemisphere now if there is a genesis of the corpus callosum that means this corpus callosum is this is a normal anatomy which is present over here if it is a genesis of the corpus callosum that means there is absence of the corpus callosum over here so a genesis of the corpus callosum all right so this is uh, the corpus a genesis of the corpus callosum then next we have um septo optic dysplasia now septo optic dysplasia is basically a condition okay in which uh, there is optic nerve hypoplasia there will be defect of the optic nerve there will be pituitary dysfunction okay and there will be de mal development of uh, the prosencephaly now because of this uh, mal development of the prosencephaly it is uh, in uh, it is placed over here okay other things are associated with the uh, dysfunction of the septo optic dysplasia Okay, next we have uh, three to four months. At three to four months, what is happening? Neuro neuronal proliferation. So we did that, uh, that the cells are proliferating, okay, into multiples. So that is known as the neuronal proliferation, dividing into multiples, and it occurs at three to four months. Now, if there is defect in this, what will happen? Either uh, like too much proliferation is occurring, so that will lead to the macroencephaly, which will which will be big head, okay. And uh, if there is uh, like decreased proliferation of the cells, then it will lead to the microencephaly. Then we have three to five months. At three to five months, neuronal migration occurs. So three to five months, neuronal migration. So we did that that the cells migrate and form the radial glia, okay, and organize themselves. So migrating to form layers, radial glia inside out. Now, if there is defect in this what will happen that it will cause schizencephaly okay so what is schizencephaly these are the abnormal clefts into the ventricle so let me show you the pictures one by one schizencephaly is this okay and you can see uh, the abnormal clefts so these are the abnormal clefts into the brain so here you can see the grade 3 schizencephaly this is known as the schizencephaly okay so this is schizencephaly next we have uh, uh, lysencephaly now lysencephaly is absence of normal sulci and gyri okay so lysencephaly is absence of normal sulci and gyri now sulci and gyri i can show you over here okay so normally we have normal sulci and gyri over here so these are known as the sulci and gyri okay so there will be absence of the sulci and gyri. you can see over here that no foldings are there no sulci and gyri are there so this is known as the lysencephaly all these are very important uh, they can ask you this okay they can ask you about the gestational week or they can ask you about the what type of development is uh, um, uh, like associated with this polymicrogyria so poly Polymicrogyria that means multiple folds. So one is the absence of folds, which is the lesencephaly. One is uh, the um, polymicrogyria. So you can see over here that multiple of the folds are present over here. Multiple of folds are present over here. Okay. So these are some of the examples given by the picture of the polymicrogyria.